will be overthrown, and the Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth, where God saw, or when God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction that he had threatened. This is the word of our Lord. So this is the story of Jonah. And Jonah is a story that you may have heard in Sunday school growing up. That's one of the stories that the kids tend to like. It's got the storm, it's got the big fish, it's got some crazy things that are going on. And so we have it a lot of times in Sunday school, but we don't always talk about it when we get a little older and we're in church like this. But Jonah, the story of Jonah, has some very important things to tell us. So what happens in this, in this account? Jonah is a prophet of God. And he's there one day when the word of the Lord comes to him, and God says, go, Jonah, go. Go to Nineveh, and I want you to proclaim my word to them. In this case, he was telling them that their evil, their wickedness had gotten so great that he was done with it. He was going to wipe them out. Now Jonah, Jonah heard this. He understood what he was supposed to do, but he didn't do it. Right? Instead, he goes the other way, and he tries to run away from God. Now, we talk about the wisdom of trying to run away from someone who is in all places at all times. It doesn't work out so well, right? But Jonah tries. He tries to run away from God because he doesn't want to go proclaim the word of God to the Ninevites. And he tells us uh, in Jonah in chapter 4, which was a little bit beyond what I just read, that the reason was that he didn't want God to save the people of Nineveh that he knew that God was a God of mercy and grace, and that if they turned from their sin, if they repented, that God wouldn't destroy them, and Jonah wanted them gone. He thought, no, 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 these are some wicked people. God, you just need to take them out. So he didn't want to go do this. God had other plans. Right? So Jonah tries to run away, and then you have the storm that comes up and the fish and all these things. Right? But the issue... The real issue in this story is not the storm, it's not the fish, it's Jonah and his heart and his actions. But Jonah, or God, had told Jonah to go because he wanted to bring salvation to Nineveh, and Jonah didn't want anything to do with it. You may say, okay, nice story, but what does this have to do with the church now thousands of years later what does this have to do with us? Well, the word of God has come to us, too. In many ways. Right? We've heard a couple of them. In Acts chapter 1, uh, verse 8, it said, But you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. In Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20, we've heard this now twice already, right? When it says, Jesus came to them and said, all authority in, in heaven and on earth has been given to me, so go. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them all that I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. In First Chronicles chapter 16, it says, Sing to the Lord, all the earth, proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among all the peoples and his marvelous deeds among the peoples. I could go on. There are a lot of passages like this. There are a lot of verses in the Bible that say, go, go tell people what God has done. Go tell them of the saving grace of Jesus Christ. So we have received God's word. And this word is for all Christians. Right? It's not just for pastors, it's not just for church workers, it's not just for super special people who have the gift of evangelism. It's for all of us. That word has come to this church and to each one of us in the church. To go. To proclaim the word of God to people, to share his love. And yet, oftentimes, like Jonah, we hear the word, we understand it, and we decide to go the other way. We decide we don't want to do this. Maybe we do that because of the same reason as Jonah. We look at the person that, that God may be saying, hey, I want you to talk to this person. We say, God, do you know what this person does? They don't deserve it. You know, or maybe we just are fearful that 
we'll be rejected, we'll be laughed at, they won't want to talk to us, whatever it might be. Sometimes we feel like we don't know what to say, and like we're going to mess it up. There are all kinds of reasons, but we often run, like Jonah, instead of going where God has sent us, into our neighborhoods, into our families, all these places where God has said, go, share the love of Christ with these people. So back to Jonah, what does God do? Right? Jonah gets on a boat, and he tries to flee from God, and God sends a storm. This storm is not punishment. This storm is a blessing, because God is not trying to destroy Jonah. God's trying to turn Jonah around. Right? God's saying, nope, I know what you're trying to do. Let's go back. Now, Jonah is a stubborn guy, so he doesn't just jump up and say, okay, God, I get it. I'll go back. No, rather, Jonah... He's continuing on, and, and they throw him into the water, right? So then God sends a fish. And this fish is also a blessing, because it, a, it saves Jonah's life. But also, once again, he's trying to turn him around. Now, what something that caught my attention this time that I don't think I had ever actually thought of uh, in the many times that I've gone through Jonah is he was in there for three days and three nights. Right? I mean, I'm thinking that if, if I'm in Jonah's place, I would hope that the storm would be enough to wake me up and say, okay, God, I get it. If not that, certainly being swallowed by a fish. But no, Jonah's a stubborn guy. He stayed in there for three days. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Until finally, he repents and he calls out to God. And then God says, okay. He causes the fish to spin him up. And he goes to Nineveh, and what happens? Right? He proclaims the word of God to them, and they turn. They repent. They turn to God. They, they put on sackcloth, and they, they repent. They confess of their sins, and God forgives them. He relents. He doesn't send the punishment that he had said that he would send. Just exactly what Jonah had known would happen. And the interesting thing here is that the people of Nineveh, they were nasty people. Right? They were doing horrible things. When, when the Bible says something like the wickedness of the people rose up to him, up to God, right? it's not like uh, they weren't quite doing everything right. It was they were doing some pretty horrible things. And so these are people that you would probably look at and say, no, nah, there's no way. It doesn't matter what happens. There's no way these people are going to stop and turn to God. It's never going to happen. And yet, when Jonah goes and proclaims God's word to them, that's exactly what happens. Because the power of God's word. Because God does amazing things when his word is proclaimed. This was something that Jonah realized. Right? That's why he was running. He said, I knew. In fact, he says in uh, Jonah chapter 4, verse 2, Jonah, when he's explaining what happened, he said, I knew that you, God, are a gracious and compassionate, compassionate God. Slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. I knew this would happen. I knew that, that I would go in there, I would proclaim this word, your word, and you would change their hearts so that you could forgive them. That you would relent and not send this calamity. Right? God brought about their forgiveness. He sent Jonah there to bring them forgiveness. Right? And God has sent us out into the world, out into our communities, into our neighborhoods, all over the place. Because there are people that he wants to show that grace and that love, that compassion that he showed the people of Nineveh. And not only those people, but the, that he showed Jonah. The great irony of this is that Jonah is all upset at the very same mercy and grace that God showed him. Right? Jonah disobeyed God. Jonah tried to run away from God. God could have said, you know what, Jonah? Fine, you're on your own. You can drown. They didn't do that. Rather, he showed his great compassion and grace to bring him around, even though it took three days and three nights in the fish, to bring him around until he would come to repentance. And he does the same with us. Oftentimes we run the other way. Right? 
But God brings us back. He wants to show that compassion and that grace. Now, he may not bring a storm, a literal storm. He may not bring a literal fish. But oftentimes, God will bring things into our lives that will turn us around. And a lot of times, kind of like Jonah, they're not the most pleasant of things. I can't imagine sitting in a fish being a pleasant thing to go through. But God will allow us to go through these things, not because he's trying to destroy us, but rather because he's trying to bring us back in his grace and his compassion. And when it comes to that word that we have been given, to go then proclaim that word so that he can show that compassion to <clears throat> others as they hear his word, he wants to show it to them too. And it's not about whether we have the right words to do it. It's the, the people of Nineveh didn't turn because Jonah was such an eloquent speaker, but it was because of the work of God. And it's the same today. That fear that we have, that we're going to somehow mess it up, that we're going to somehow do something wrong with it, we don't need to be afraid of it because it's not us. We can't save a single person. But God wants. And God wants to. So we've been sent. And it's to show that great compassion and mercy that God has shown each of us. All right, and we may have some stories here. Actually, we all have a story here of how God's word has come into our lives and changed us. It may be a story from when we were little and our parents raised us in that way. And God used that to create faith. It may be something when we were much older and God sent someone into our lives to share that love of Jesus. But we all had that story. Because we all were sinners that were brought into salvation by the grace of God. And now God gives us the wonderful opportunity to share that love and compassion and salvation with others. Amen. Amen. Amen.